We had a, a lot of fun with what we had, and we were always really, really proud of where we live. My name is Eleni Lawrence. I'm a native Washingtonian. I was born at Washington Hospital Center and grew up in Adams Morgan, Columbia Heights, Mount Pleasant, and currently live in Brightwood. Well, in simple terms, being a native of Washingtonian means that I was born here in DC. Um, a lot of times people that move here don't think about the fact that there are many of us who were born here and who went to public schools here and who grew up here. And it's um, just like most people have their hometown. This is my hometown. I remember growing up and moving from an apartment on Columbia Road to my parents, the first house that they bought in the 1300 block of Irving Street. Many of the houses were not occupied. Well, none of the businesses that, that everyone is familiar with now, like the Target and all that huge complex, like none of that existed. We didn't have the Metro station right there at the corner of 14th Street and Columbia Road. I remember riding my bike around the neighborhood and like, where the metro is now was literally a big, just empty field or, or just dirt. And I remember like going to the old Woolworths that was there on 14th street and like buying Michael Jackson posters for my bedroom wall. A lot of people, when they talk about DC back in the days, they have like a lot of uh, negative things to say, but for me, it, I mean, it was home. There are a lot more people moving into the city. The demographics of the city have changed a lot. There are a lot more white families in the city and in, in a variety of different places. And that's a, that's a big change that we've seen here. You know, there is always a, a pretty big distinction between the east side of Rock Creek Park and the west side of Rock Creek Park. Um, and I grew up on the east side of Rock Creek Park and used to take the Metro bus to the west side to go to school. Um, and there were a lot of kids like me who did that. And it was mostly black boys and girls jumping on the bus heading to the west of the park to go to schools that were in more affluent white neighborhoods. And part of the reason why that was happening was because Many of the white families that lived there were not sending their kids to school there. There was a big effort from those specific schools to actually recruit families to send their kids because they didn't want the schools to get closed down. I went to elementary school in Cleveland Park, and then that school fed into the Deal and Wilson feeder pattern. So that's where I went to um, junior high and high school starting high, when I was in junior high, my parents moved, well, I should say they sold the house on the 1300 block of Irving Street and bought a house on the 1700 block of Irving Street. So they moved from Columbia Heights to Mount Pleasant. That was really, really big for me because before we moved, I had, you know, friends at my school whose parents didn't let them come to my house because they said, no, she lives in the bad part of town. She lives in a bad neighborhood. It's not safe. You know, you can't go there. And then when we moved um, into Mount Pleasant, then, you know, people, even though it was still the east side of the park, people were a little bit more comfortable with that. And I remember very vividly um, in May of 1991, which was my senior year in high school, um, the occasion that led to the Mount Pleasant riots. 
and I was trying to come back home driving and the police had a perimeter around Mount Pleasant and so no one could come in. So I couldn't come home. And I remember driving um, back over to my boyfriend's house at the time. You know, I was like pleading with the police, please, I wanna go home. And they're like, you can't go in here. Like, you know, you don't, don't you know like what's going on in here? Obviously this was before cell phones and, and all that. So there was no way for me to get in touch with my family. So I drove back to my boyfriend's house. I told him what was going on and I called my mom and I was like, I can't come home. Like the streets are blocked off. The police won't let me back home. And then she said, oh, I hear it now. I hear the helicopter flying around. She's like, well, are you okay? And I said, yes, I'm okay. She's like, can you stay where you are? And I said, yeah. What is going on that I can't go home? But it's amazing to look back on it now that that was a moment that sparked some progress. Like I remember like the Port Ellis exhibit and seeing like photos from that time. And I was like, it's strange to think about this as history because I live that like I very specifically remember that it's not like, oh yes, this is the Mount Pleasant riots. I'm like, yeah, that's when I was like locked out of my house. DC is special and very unique because it is a city that is not part of a state. It is a very unique status that we have in that way. For me, it was interesting, honestly, to go away college because I went to Virginia and I had a very hard time understanding the concepts of what a county is and like state legislatures and different forms of local government because we don't have that here. We have our city council and we have our mayor and we have our AMC commissioners, but you know, our, and we govern everything. As a city, we do everything that states do and everything that cities do. You know, we run all our agencies and have to offer all the same um, benefits and services to our residents as any other state and local municipality will have to do. Um, and that's very, very unique. While we are living under, you know, taxation without representation, while we are taxpayers and yet do not have votes in Congress, something that I've lived my whole life through and hopefully that that is something that will change. But I was amazed how many of the other students at the University of Virginia did not know that DC was not part of the state. Like they didn't believe me. DC is not part of Virginia and no, it is not part of Maryland. I really want students at Carlos Rosario to know that um, DC is a very special place in the United States. It has a rich history. If you look at our building, uh, oh, you know, 1100 Harvard Street, that is a historic building with, with lots of history of, of the city. Um, DC is our four quadrants, Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast, all eight wards and all of our neighborhoods. People here are very proud to be from here and we're very welcoming to, to people that move here. But we also uh, want to be respected and we want people to come to DC and then fall in love with DC, just like we love it. Do you know what time it is? Tell me, do you know? Do you